Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to People of Qur'an Where every night I share with you a story about how one of our pious predecessors interacted with an ayah of the Qur'an So with the last two stories we saw a woman that was just a random woman in the ummah And we saw a great scholar And you might ask yourself, you know, subhanAllah, how is it that this ummah was able to produce people that way? And the answer that I would say is that, you know what? The, the compassion that the scholars showed, the willingness to teach the people And the willingness of the people to learn uh, was just outstanding. And this is a tradition that we take from the Prophet ﷺ to his companions and then the companions to the Tabi'een and how they pass down that knowledge from generation to generation. And in essence, a child could sit in, you know, in any of the halaqat and a child could, could really benefit and ask the questions they needed to ask. And they would actually love their teachers, they would love their mashayikh. And so the story that I'm going to share with you today, it's a teacher-student experience and it's more about that experience than the actual ayah because SubhanAllah shows you the beautiful way of interaction that our tradition teaches us. So this is a narration from Abdullah ibn al-Harith rahimahullah ta'ala, um, not the companion but the tabi'i. And he's telling the story about himself as a child. And he says, when I was a child, I used to go and sit in the halaqahs of different companions and some of the senior tabi'in, some of the senior uh, predecessors or some of the senior successors to the companions. And one of the people that I sat in his halaqah was, uh, was Ka'ab ibn al-Ahbar, or Ka'ab al-Ahbar, rahimahullah ta'ala. And Ka'ab was a very interesting man. He was one of the prominent rabbis that converted to Islam. He was a rabbi from Yemen and he accepted Islam around the time of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He never met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but he became a senior scholar in this religion. And that's the beauty of this religion is that, you know, scholars from other faiths came into it and became scholars within it as well. So Ka'ab is giving this lecture and he said he was doing, Abdullah says he was doing this tafsir of Surah Al-Anbiya and he came to verse number 20 which is in the juz that we're talking about and the verse is talking about the angels and Allah says يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ That the angels glorify Allah day and night and they never get tired, they are never fatigued. SubhanAllah, they're constantly saying SubhanAllah, they're constantly worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without ever needing to take a break to eat or drink, never feeling any form of desire and they, they actually take pleasure, their pleasure is in glorifying and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abdullah says that when he said that, I blurted out in the middle of the lecture, I says, uh, I said, but Shaykh, you know, how is it possible that they're able to constantly do tasbih, they're able to constantly glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they also have to deliver messages and they also have to record deeds and they also have to do certain actions and they also speak. How is it that they're constantly doing tasbih? How can Allah say, la yafturun? So Ka'ab, he says, where is the young man that said that? So some of the seniors in the, in the halaqa, uh, they pointed out Abdullah, and they said that you know they said that this young man is from Banu Abdul Muttalib that he's a young man from uh, from Quraysh from the tribe of Banu Abdul Muttalib. So Ka'ab got up and he started to approach to approach Abdullah. So Abdullah says as he was coming at me, I mean you can only imagine if the Sheikh is walking towards you and you interrupted in the lecture, he's probably you know at that time going to take a stick or something like that. That's the image that we have at least. He says instead he came to me, فَقَبَّرَ رَأْسِي and he kissed me on the forehead. And he said to me very compassionately, يَا بُنَيَّ إِنَّهُ جَعْلَ لَهُمُ التَّسْبِيحِ كَمَا جَعْلَ لَكُمُ النَّفَسِ He said, O oh my son, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them tasbih or has made tasbih to them, the act of glorifying him, the same way he's made breathing to you. And he said, أَلَيْسَ تَتَكَلَّمْ وَأَنْتَ تَتَنَفَسِ Don't you uh, speak and at the same time you breathe? And so I nodded my head and I said yes. And he says, وَتَمْشِي وَأَنْتَ تتنفس. And at the same time you're able to walk but you're still breathing. And I nodded my head and I said yes. He said, likewise the angels are able to carry out what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. And they're constantly in a state of tasbih and they don't stop the same way that you don't stop breathing though you're doing multiple actions. So subhanAllah, it's a beautiful example not just because of the explanation of the ayah but again the tradition and the way that it was passed down. How compassionate really we should be when we're teaching younger people, when we're teaching our kids and when we're teaching our younger brothers and sisters in the ummah about the religion. We should show that compassion and we should you know, take their questions and we should do our best to answer them and not make them feel like they asked a question they shouldn't have asked. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that same tenderness and compassion and to make us learn enough in the religion to where we can teach others, benefit ourselves and benefit others. Allahumma ameen. Inshallah ta'ala, I will see you all tomorrow. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.